in a country where there was no law and no order, in a time where tribes, neighbors, and individuals were always at state of wars and conflict, in a time where women misused and overpowered by male-dominated society, in a time where female infants were buried, alive, killed for no crimes whatsoever other than being females, in a time where your, the color of your skin will determine whether you are a master to be respected, to be obeyed, or a slave to be purchased like the cheapest product ever and humiliated. In a time where fornication, addiction to alcohol and gambling were widespread, in that very corrupt environment, in that very corrupt place, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our beloved Prophet, was born. And with him, the glad tidings. Glad tidings to free us from the shackle of worshipping other than the Creator. Because in that very corrupt environment, woods and stones were also worshipped other than, beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَّةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ O Muhammad, Allah is addressing the Prophet وسلم, telling him that we have not sent you except to the entire mankind. بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا A bearer of glad news, glad tidings, and a warner. The Prophet ﷺ was not only a bearer of glad news, nor was he a warner, or a warner only. He was a combination of both. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended that verse by saying, But the majority of mankind simply do not know. And that includes us, my brothers and sisters, the Muslims. We are not aware of the value that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us. Or we became accustomed to neglect the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as found in the Quran and the teaching of the beloved of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I wouldn't ever do justice to the topic in the time given, but I would be inshallah pointing out few things which I I believe that they are some or part of the glad tidings sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But before we get started, I want you to remember one thing. We are here with an intention and that is to listen to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the reminders that we will be given and take an intention to act upon the knowledge to the best of your ability. We want to rectify this intention before we get started. So are you ready, inshallah? I can't hear you. Are you ready? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. One of the things which I believe among the greatest of all glad tidings that came along or came with the Prophet Muhammad wasallam is hope hope in Allah's forgiveness hope that no matter how much you have sinned no matter how much you have erred still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you just to turn back to him and ask for forgiveness so that he may forgive you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us ya ayyuhan nas tubu ilallahi wa astaghfiru O people Return back to Allah in repentance and seek His forgiveness. For I return to Allah in repentance and I do seek His forgiveness every single day a hundred times. That was the Prophet wasallam, the best of all creation, the best of all selection, 
sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own guidance despite the fact that all his sins the past and the ones in the future were wiped out were forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet he did not rely on that fact and he kept on repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how about you and I my brothers and sisters I receive a lot of emails sometimes from people who have been stuck with one particular sin they are good Muslims they pray they fast they do all the obligations they wear hijab they wear niqab they are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there is that one particular sin that's bothering them and sometimes they give up on themselves and they say you know what I'm not gonna pray anymore I'm ashamed because I've been asking Allah to forgive me, but every time I fall back again and I relapse and I do the same sin again and again. Listen to this, my brother, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Tell them, O Muhammad Tell them, he's our messenger. He's the one who is conveying to us these glad tidings. Tell my servants who have transgressed against their own souls, who have sinned day and night. Tell them, despair not from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah forgive all sins. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiven, most merciful. So rejoice, my brothers and sisters. This is a glad tidings for those who are despaired, for those who think that because their sins have drowned them for many years, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also informed us in another narration that Allah said, O oh, son of Adam, where you come to me with sins that are as huge as the distance between the earth and the heavens ascribing no partner to me whatsoever and you ask of repentance and you ask repentance of me I shall forgive you and I shall come to you with repentance that as huge as the amount of your sins glad tidings to those who repent glad tidings to those who return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for his forg forgiveness another beautiful glad tiding given by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is honor and dignity he uplifted those people who were oppressed during those days one of them is Bilal ibn Rabah a black Abyssin, Abyssinian came from Ethiopia and when he, when he heard the message of equality preached by the Prophet وسلم, immediately he became a Muslim and people couldn't even believe that Bilal ibn Rabah was put in a position of leadership a black slave he was looked down upon he became the Mu'addin that every time when we hear the Adhan, the call to prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, five times a day, we remember Bilal ibn Rabah. Dignity, honor. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu arda when he traveled from Medina to Jerusalem to receive the keys of Al-Quds, the Masjid of Al-Aqsa, due to the travel he looked not so neat and some of the companions told him you are Amir al muminin you are the leaders of the believers what are you wearing you should have put on something beautiful he said -Islam. we are a people who were dignified and honored through Islam and if we were to seek honor through any other means Allah will humiliate us Allah will disgrace us Islam is the greatest favor my brothers and sisters Islam is the greatest gift given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا This day I have perfected for you your way of life, your deen, your religion Completed my favor upon you And have chosen Islam for you to be your way of life It is the choice of Allah, my brothers and sisters, to honor you To honor you, so don't ruin that gift <laughs>